Ugh. Oh no, it's supposed to do that. It's it's a heat effect. Oh the yeah, yeah. Isn't actually warbling. <laughs> How many climate change jokes can we make? There's an amount. Well, no, it's the most common thing you see in Japanese anime. It's, oh, I know. It's disgustingly hot and humid in their summer, even though it's probably no more than 90 degrees. And literally just need the army of cicadas in the background that just make the same sound loop over and over again in anime. Yep. I kind of blame Neon Genesis especially for popularizing that trope. I don't remember being as prevalent before that. Probably, yeah, but also how much anime did you watch from before 1995? Besides Gundam. Okay, there you go. Uh, well, Dragon Ball, obviously. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, not too... Mm. Gumbuster, I guess? I, yeah, that's one of the things we need to get back on. Yeah, we did watch that. It was really we cool. We watched the movie version. We need to watch the actual uh, episodic version, because that one has a dub now. Yeah, outside of that, it's mostly movies that aren't Gundam, so... Yeah, you do kind of have me there, but again, like, I don't remember any of that shit before any anime outside before that, that one particularly. This is true, though, by and large. Yeah. So we... you'll notice that we're back in the same place again. This game introduces side quests, which is just... Go back to stage you've already been to and... Do something in there again, go through half of it, talk to a specific character, beat a certain person, what have you. Yeah. And it would be mildly annoying if not for the fact that by the end of it you need all the EXP you can get. But also it's cool seeing some of the stages in a, with a different lighting, with a different time of day, sometimes from a different camera angle, what have you. I will say the heat wave visual effect is actually pretty cool. It's subtle enough that it's not obtrusive or anything. It doesn't give me a headache like the screen tearing in Pirate Warriors 1. <laughs> there is that. Had we finished one by the time we finished up the live action? Or were, 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 were we still not done by then? I... So we weren't done by the time we got to the last bit of story recording, but we were done by the time we got to the bonus recording for Zoro. Okay. Okay, yeah, so we've said everything we need to say about that. More or less, yeah. Okay. Actually, wait, no, wasn't it? Okay, so it was the 1980s where actually people were fearful that we were actually going to backslide into an ice age because of the, of the declining climate. Then it was the 90s where everything kind of like actually kicked upwards a bit. I think that was the 70s when people were afraid of global cooling. The, yeah. the 90s was when we had uh, the ozone layer crisis. Yeah, it was like the 70s and the 80s where people thought we were going to go into uh, actually descend into an ice age, but. Because of the climbing uh, CO2 in the atmosphere, that's actually started what, what led to the atmosphere actually climbing, so... I'd be willing to bet that might have actually been what led to heat rising, ergo... Why we got that trope appearing in anime with the cicadas and everything. Uh, it's just, it's just a crap extrapolation on my part. By the way, yes, the coolest summer for the rest of your lives. So the reason you want to do the side quests in addition to most of them actually having dialogue with various characters you don't interact with normally or extra uh -huh. is because it gives you more of your upgrade resource than you get in any of the main quests. Oh, this is a side quest. Fuck, I should have been paying attention to that. You get uh, you get more than double the uh, more than double the level up resources uh, than you do in a main quest. Shit, I'm not on the ball right now. I should have mentioned. Yes, we also have an overworld. that's really cool. I mean, I know you and some others don't like a world at all, and I do understand where you guys are coming from. I think it adds a lot of charm to it, personally. It depends on the structure of the game. Yeah. I think they're fine for the most part, it just depends on what you do with them. By the by, this area might look familiar. Yeah, w so it's not the same version, but we have been to this area before. We have been to this, more or less, this forest. Obviously, that being said, though, well, on top of the fact we're actually recording at that, like, 2K versus my 720p recording I think I did back in 2017. No, by then we were uh, we were on uh, 1080. Oh, I can only hope. I, I hope so. Um, yeah, this we is gonna... Yeah, HDMI back then. This looks way better. Holy crap. It's all the fucking small details and stuff. Again, PS5 really bringing out a lot, a lot of life in this, but... So it also helps this is a PS5 version of the game specifically, so it actually is taken care of taking advantage of added features in a full 4K resolution. That is correct. Oh, I guess I can, I can talk about, about this now, too, since <laughs> we're on that. I own a PS5 now. We're not just... I mean, we're, we're recording with the brands, obviously, but he's ho he's owned his since, I think, pretty much close to the actual launch of the PS5, right? Uh, summer of 21. Okay, so a few months afterwards. and uh, Far enough removed that you weren't at me at risk of getting jumped if people saw you with the box. 
Although there's a good, still probably a big a chance of that, honestly. I was a little worried about that from time to time, bringing it to your house at that time, that I was like, Hey, yeah, can you be my bodyguard as I get out the door at 6 a.m.? <laughs> no, I totally feel you on that one. But no, I actually got one of my, for myself, and it's really cool, but... I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's, it's start, it feels more and more just like a... Not like a standalone console by itself, like going from the PS2 to the PS3, but it feels more like just a... The PS4 a, Pro Pro. It, yeah, right? No, believe me, I understand that feeling. For me, that's worth it because of the because of the added performance. But once you actually get to playing actual PS5 games on it, yeah, uh, you'll be you'll get the feeling. I no, I, d I definitely believe that. But and what I mean is specifically games actually made only for the PS5, not PS5 upgrades of PS4 games. Yeah. So not even like Ragnarok or uh, Seven Remake, but something like Spider-Man 2 that doesn't have a last-gen version, so it's only. For current gen and thus has all of the current gen features yeah that being said though obviously i'm not gonna knock it too much like it it uh, i have not experienced a low time with the game with the the console yet really but it is just like maybe it's just because of the, the backwards compatibility finally with the, the ps4 but it just it does really just feel more like a super upgraded version of the ps4 Hey, if you got the super ultimate version of PlayStation Plus, you can play your PS1, 2, and 3 games on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Granted, all the, th the PS3 games are uh, streaming only, but hey, they're still there. <laughs> yeah. Jim Ryan needs to uh, be dropped in a hole. Is he the current president of PlayStation? I don't. He's not their president, I don't think, but he is uh, one of their higher-up executives. He's... The guy that uh, greenlit all of the eight, all of the eighteen different Horizon games. Jeez. And he's also the guy that said at a Gran Turismo anniversary event, "Why would anyone want to play these kiosks for Gran Turismo's one through five, the PS one, two, and three games because they look old and hideous? Why? Why would anyone want to play any old games ever? Only ever focus on new games. That's why we don't do old, uh, do full backwards compatibility because who would want to play old games when you can play new shiny games because no one has ever played a game from before the year t from th more than three years prior ever in human history definitely not i also think he was the guy behind the last of us remake remake and um the in the works horizon one remake remaster thing what the fuck i haven't had a chance to play that yet jesus christ I'll remind people that if this is true, I, don't, I still don't think we know about that for sure. Horizon is, uh, was a game that launched in 2017, and that might be getting an actual remake, and oh, Jesus fucking Christ, leave it alone. It just came out. What the fuck? Its sequel only came out a year ago, and it got a VR game earlier this year. Well, six years ago is longer ago than you think, Bob. No, fuck, it's not. Jesus. Not correct. Today's the day and age. Also, how many more games do you intend to let uh, Horizon job out to? It released the same week as Breath of the Wild, and the, Ouch. Second, the, the second game released the same week as Elden Ring. Oh no! Oh no, you're dead on the ground, buddy! Jesus! <laughs> also, hello, Bear Traps. It's kind of a cool detail. I know, I thought it was funny. Yeah, I don't do those soul games, but, uh, but even I can recognize the merits of fucking Elden Ring. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, they're literally the most hyped game and, and excited game. <laughs> that one time, uh, Dorito Pope, I forgot his name. Well, Jeff uh, Keighley. Jeff Keighley uh, said the word Elden Ring up, and people, he was like, yep, I did, I did say it. Everyone lost their shit. It was great. <laughs> Last I checked, that game sold somewhere in the realm of 22 million copies. I can believe it. I am responsible for three of those purchases. <laughs> Did you actually buy the PlayStation version? No, I forgot. I I was uh, fooling myself to think I did for a minute, and I wouldn't be surprised, but no, I didn't. I was yeah. going to say, if you do that, that's the only way I'm going to play it. Yeah, right? <laughs> I like how the bear trap acted to hit, but didn't hit for you whatsoever. I can outrun it. That's... Oh, there really is a bevy of Sonic jokes to be had with this. I might do something with this in post. I don't fucking know yet. The fun, I guess. Deja vu. I feel like I've been in this place before. I've been... Again, I have to talk about it. Look how gorgeous this game looks. Gee, do the rainbow effects. Oh my god. I didn't even notice that, yeah, on uh Oh wait, hold up. Actually, god rays. actually wait, hold up. Walk away a little bit with the the, the sunshine. I see I, those are 2D objects. Okay, I've ruined it yeah. took away a little bit, but still not bad. Yeah, I think those are 2D. Even so, it still looks nice. Oh and yeah, definitely. Also on the actual flowers itself there in the center. So I would like to mention also, like if you look at a lot of the lighting also effects. Also the shadows. 
Yeah. So that makes it look like they're actually below trees. I'd like to mention also, like, looking at a lot of, like, the visual effects of this game, you guys can probably understand why I thought this game was running Unity, because I feel like a lot of the visual effects you see here are, like, not stock effects, but, like, common effects you can, I see people do in the Unity engine. And again, not a bad thing. I, j I was just, I'm just confused is all. Maybe it turned down the bloom a little. Yeah, I, I can't see that whatsoever. It's kind of hilarious, actually. Yeah, you know what this reminds me of? Hmm. What was that one forest level that was in Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield? It, was, so, it kind of reminds like the mushroom thing. It kind of reminds me of that. The Glimwitangle. Yeah, again, may, <laughs> I think I'm the only person who's brought up anything in Sword and Shield after Scarlet and Violet dropped. Hey, I like that game. I, I like, do, too. I don't ironically, I actually really like Sword and Shield, and I feel like I'm the only person who does. At worst, that game was middle of the road for Pokemon. It's not yeah. actually bad by any stretch. It's got some technical performance issues, but it's not nearly that bad. Hey, the technical performance could always get worse. It, <laughs> it can. And people thought it was a problem when the game uh, decided to run 25 FPS in the wild area. 20 or lower if you were actually in the multiplayer mode. It can always get worse, guys. That's what happens when you're running a phone that was old when it was new in... Tw in 2015. I can't believe they actually put a Mortal Kombat 1 to the Switch. I am genuinely- <laughs> I- I didn't know about that until Rich was covering I was like, wait, you got- you fuckers did what? I mean, that shouldn't be that surprising. You've seen me play Mortal Kombat 11 on the Switch. I feel like I- you're right. Wait, no I haven't. Yeah, you have, because I had that playing once and you wanted to see it because you wanted to see what Terminator played like. Oh my god, I did. Yeah, this would have been- Right, I thought it was 10, shit. This would have been, uh, Tempe House. Yeah, I wouldn't remember that. Okay, so that... Damn. Still, though, like, trying to get a PS5 game running on a Switch, which is, like, sub-PS3 performance. Damn. The absolute balls on Netherrealm. I... I pl no, actually, you know what? That strikes me as a Warner Brothers, uh, decision, because Warner Brothers is a stupid company sometimes. It's entirely Warner Brothers. Oh, I say it sometimes, really most of the time, especially if you see what they've been doing lately. What specifically have they been doing lately? Well, I probably know, I just don't remember. Attacks right off of completely scrapping oh, the, yeah. the the Batgirl movie and uh, to that all actually had anim all of their animated shows. All of the animated shows being nuked off of streaming services. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, Ta the, one, the ones that never got a DVD release and thus never will. Yeah. The ones where all the writers and animators had to say, "Just go pirate the fucking show. We're not going to be able to." make any money off of it ever again. I fully endorse streaming shows once again these days in the wake of the price hikes and the writer strike. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Anyway, hi Alice. Oh my god, you look cute in this game. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, she normally doesn't, so that's a good thing. Yeah, sometimes she looks like a zombie at best. Sometimes she looks like an actual one of her dolls at worst. But here, nah, she's kind of adorable. I, I, maybe I should mention, I do actually really like the bubbly art style in this game. It does look really good for the Toho universe. Oh no, yeah, no, this looks, uh, this, this looks amazing. Despite oh, Toho, uh, despite Reimu's, uh, odd tan she has, but that's about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to it. I kind of dig it. Gives her a little flavor, I'm good. That bit of complexion is some of the, is some of the most characterization some characters ever get. That is unfortunately kind of true. Because you get some characters that literally are never given dialogue. <laughs> uh, where, a fan, yeah. where fans have to make up an entire character because they're a stage mid-boss that only exists to, pro to prolong a fight with an actual character. Anyway, I'm just gonna play some uh, Donkey Kong music since we have literally nothing going on right now, so fuck it, may as well. I love that this is always your go-to track. Uh, okay, so it's, it's, it's cute. Also, I've been thinking of Super Saiyan 4 a lot with it recently because of various <laughs> YouTube channels. <laughs> So the deal that's going on right now is Reimu uh, is asking Alice about the giant doll thing because it's like, well, she makes dolls. She does all the doll puppet shows. She would probably know. This and is now, a logical train of thought. And Alice is like, yeah, I made that thing, but it went berserk one day and I have no idea how. Can you fix it for me? No, it went berserk. Go, no. Uh, also, can you do it without <clears throat> destroying it? Also, I don't know where it is and I have no way of finding it. Also, L plus ratio. <laughs> I like how the bots are actually keeping up with your levels exactly. Are you noticing this? Uh, the stages are actually set at certain levels, and uh, you level up with them. Uh, I see. By the way, is this thing with Alice actually main story, or is this a side quest too? Uh, this is the main story. Oh, okay. So you think about doing it like main story, side quest, main story, side quest? 
I'm gonna do the side quests, all of them, whenever they appear. You don't typically get more than two of them at once, I don't think. Damn, that was almost a kill. Is it just me or I always usually have one of the easier attack patterns to go against. Molly well, gets outside the first spot she, that she is in, um, Telvania too. Typically, yeah. Like, she went for the linear attack there, I'm just like, huh. I feel like I've seen that same, same linear attack a bunch of times in other games we've done before. Yeah, that sort of thing is common where she just sends the straight wave of dolls at you. Yeah, that checks. Also, there are a bunch of people that are going to be targeting Sumireko because they want her to cut out her bullshit. That or maybe some of them are trying to take advantage of her to use her power, maybe. I can imagine that would be probably the case for some of them. That too. <clears throat> also, I have found out about found out about her immediately and just decided to start writing about her in the paper. Checks out. <laughs> God damn it, Aya. <laughs> oh, for the love of I <laughs> <What? laughs> Raymu two hundred percent done with this shit. <laughs> Hey, we got it. We got what you wanted. Yep, not giving a <laughs> shit. Reimu is here. So we're given uh, the option to go to two different places right now. Nigel. Hey, Nigel. We can go to... Hey, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's three places. We have two main quests we can do. The... We can uh, we can go uh, check out Aya and see what she knows because of all the shit she right? Mm -hmm. Or we can go chase after the doll that's currently sitting inside the cave trying to recuperate. Hmm. But in the meantime, we're gonna do something else first. We're going on another quest. Sorry, I was just looking at Raymu memes to remind myself of the good stuff. <laughs> Request on Marissa, interesting. We're helping gather her dinner. Okay. Her favorite food is mushrooms. We're gathering mushrooms for her. I haven't been listening much, but I guess I can hear a little bit of it now. What's the music in this game like? Is it anything good? It's, uh, like with all of the games, typically, it's remixes of, uh, tracks from the actual Toho games. Yeah. This, I think, is from Toho 10. Yeah, this sounds like one of the, uh, Traversing the Mountain themes. Okay, I have a weird question. Who is it that's writing the music for the Toho games? Because maybe it's just, this is the thing I should have asked sooner, because I can't imagine it's Zune himself doing it. Zune is a one-man army. No fucking way, really? Literally, the only reason the Toho project exists as a video game series is as, is as a vehicle for his music. I... Uh, I thought it was... Huh. That's what oh, that's actually crazy. Holy crap. See, I know he does the art style. That's why it looks kind of hilarious. Um, no, no disrespect to him. He, it has gotten better. Uh, I know he does the gameplay and the engine, but he does the fucking music as well. Oh, my God. He does literally everything. He made one engine in 1996 or seven. Used that for the first five games, made a new one in 2002 and has been making slight revisions to it over time and he's been using that for the last 21 years. That's nuts. The only other man I know of who comes close to that is Daisuke Ishiwatari, who does obviously the music for Guilty Gear in general, but he also uh, does the writing. I think he does that. He did the character designs concepts that he did the art himself, I think, back in the first Guilty Gear. He's the lead programmer. And, and he's also probably the lead programmer and design man. He's uh, Daisuke is... He's also the one you can also uh, definitely uh <laughs> okay i love i love it just how much i've been seeing guilty gear popping up more and more on uh tumblr these days since i've been actually on their way more uh, so i do respect the man he is very progressive for J uh, japanese people like bridget goddamn memes. what or bridget memes or testament memes bridget testament uh also um uh, bringing back and uh what what was what was his fucking name? Uh, shirtless dude has a story of bike and I should remember him, but I don't ask somehow. Anji. Anji, yeah. Um, like already he was already pretty based back in the day for including a shirtless character who's also equally fan service for women and Anji. Like that's literally the reason he exists. To offset the 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 accusations of this, this is a trying to appeal only to men. Well, here's a character appealing appealing to women. Fucking wonderful dude. My favorite uh, Tumblr bit is um, is a post that has gifts of all the various different walk cycles for Biken, and especially yep. Strive, where she's walking sp uh, Boa Hancock spine bent with her tits out. Yep. And the text that says, "It's her. She's the woman that uh, that boobed breastily." <laughs> Not. This isn't a wrong assessment. Because if you don't know that, that's a, that's a meme based on how. 
me how men write women, and especially how women move. No, no, I can I can see it. By the way, we called the w the weird rainbow head again. I forgot the fucking thing's name. Yukuri. Yukuri. Th thank you. I'm glad they made the return as well. I can imagine we're gonna have a lot of callbacks in this game as well. Those I those uh, serve a purpose akin to the uh, metal slimes in Dragon Quest, which is you kill them and uh, they have a they have a high quality item inside them. That would definitely do it. I have tried to learn Biken seriously, but I'm so she's busy the with most complicated character in the game. Well, actually, no, she's a lot easier to use than before. No, the most complicated character I think is still Eddie, unless Asuka is somehow more crazy. I thought he wasn't in the game yet. Uh, I think he is. I don't oh, know. No, 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 it's, it's Venom that's not in yet. Venom's not in yet, and I think Johnny recently got announced. But Johnny's also gonna be very complicated if he's anything like it was before. Anyway, also Slayer's not in either. Uh... Vampire. Oh right. I think I'd be more okay with Slayer didn't come back. Gameplay or character? Yeah, gameplay. He's fucking batshit insane and in guilty gear. Um, Exard. <laughs> if you get counter and hit, you fucking die. Anyway, hi Marissa. Enjoy her while she lasts. This is the only time we're gonna talk to her in the Rainbow campaign. Oh, it's gonna be one of those stories. It's gonna be like RE2, Leon, and Jill, where they have very limited interaction with each other, but they have entirely different stories, I see. Kinda, yeah. I imagine this, could be, this is gonna be similar, kinda accurate to the flip side, where we use Marissa and fight Raymond on, like, in the same spot. Probably. Wait, why is Marissa finding us if she sent out us out to go find food? Because the food is actually being used for a potion. Oh. And after she tests it on us, Reimu gets pissed and attacks her for, <laughs> for using us as a guinea pig for her uh, for her potions. I... That's fair. That is very fair. <laughs> Glass shattering. Stone Cold enters. <laughs> and she's back up! <laughs> Alright, there's a little bit of her going on here. I just wish we had more music. <laughs> You want to do that every time? I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll fish around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, party time. Uh, yeah, no, you are you weren't kidding actually. The the help bosses do seem to be getting a lot more tanky. That's for sure. That's a fun pattern. All right, well, seems easy enough, but the differentiating times for the stars does seem complicated. Well, I can only hope that she might be a little bit easier to dodge because of the fucking beam she spews out. You see how much better this one is? How it hit 12 times as opposed to the uh, the original's 3. Yeah. I only just noticed an attack bonus on the top left because of what you got, you're not getting hit. There we go. It goes based on how many hits in a row you get. I see. It's... Oh, Bleach Rage Pulse. Okay. So like you get 10 or 15 hits or higher and you get... A 10% or a 20% attack bonus. I really appreciate the developers actually rewarding you for playing the, the fights better and actually giving you more attack power. It's really cool. They didn't do enough to uh, keep it interesting. Yeah. Actually encouraged um, trying to learn the patterns and all that. It's really cool. You would think this would be setting up a chain of side quests, but it's not. She says I'll call you anytime I need I work I come up with a new spell. <laughs> okay. No, if this is just the one. Oh, it was a side quest, right? Yep. We have two other if it's in green on the map it's a side quest, and if it stays on the map it's a replayable side quest. Main quests are not replayable. 